Welcome back to Fletcher House and Garden. It is a rainy Monday evening here, and it's the week of Thanksgiving. I'm upstairs in my home office, where I'm knocking out a project that I think is a grand one, and that's the Christmas tree you see in the corner. Let's decorate it together. Won't you join me? As I mentioned, tonight we are in my home office. It's a space you have not seen before because, oh, hello, because I do not technically consider it finished. I still have some art and wall decor to hang on the walls, and I have some cords to camouflage. But tonight, we will be in here to focus on the Christmas tree. But if you're interested in a tour, let me know. I'm gonna make sure all the materials that we need are close by handy and then I'm also going to make sure that the tree is nice and fluffed. I did try to take care of this prior to the video. Oh hey Ollie! Oliver is here. Sweet boy. Oh he's such a good boy. Glad to see him. Let's see if we can get him close to the camera to wave hello. Say hi Ollie. <laughs> Maybe he will stick around. I'll put him in the chair. Maybe he will stick around to help supervise but also just to keep us company tonight. But back to fluffing. I just like to make sure there are no holes or gaps, make sure everything is nice looking before. Yeah, maybe? Seal of approval, we get the thumbs up. But it looks nice before we start adding things to the tree. And I'm going to start with ribbon. As you can see here, I have some green ribbon, velvet, it is wired, and it has a nice like fair aisle or sweater kind of motif to it. I have about eight of these that I have cut into 10 to 12 inch strips. And what I like to do is I will kind of figure out where the halfway point is. There we go. And then I will use the tree branches to secure the ribbon to the tree. I'm, I'm doing it like towards the front of the tree, bringing it out front a little bit forward, if you will. But once it is secure to the tree, I will bend the ribbon so that it looks like I have a bow in the tree. But this is without the hassle of actually tying a bow to the tree. I really like this concept. It adds some nice texture to the tree and color to the tree as well, but doesn't require a lot of effort. So let's see. Looks good. <laughs> Ollie. I'm going to add as many of these ribbons as I can to this tree. Again, for a pop of color, nice texture, but I'm gonna make sure they are evenly distributed as best as I can. Oh, Ollie's leaving, that's fine. Maybe he'll be back. I'm gonna focus on these ribbons for now. Again, making sure they look like bows, kind of folding them. I'm making sure they look good from multiple angles. That way, if you're walking into the room or sitting at the desk, any point in the room, you know, you've got a nice vantage point of the tree decorations. Oh, yes, this chair is gonna be in the way. <laughs> so we will move it now. That way I can get to that side of the tree and decorate it. Now, let's get the ornament hooks, yes, those things, on standby, because we will be needing them very soon. Set those up, move the candle, yes. And then I have caffeine with me. I don't know if you noticed that, but I did make myself a cup of coffee. I like being caffeinated, yes, there's the good stuff. I like being caffeinated when I am decorating a Christmas tree, especially on a rainy Monday evening. Okay. I think I will be back with some picks. Yes. All right, these picks are super fun. I got them at um, Hobby Lobby about three years ago. Glitter, gold, little curly, doodads, whimsical, love it. I have four of these to work with. <laughs> Oliver, I'm pointing at Oliver, making sure he does not think my picks are toys. But these picks are very fun specifically to use in this tinsel tree just because the gold plays off 
that metallic very well. Also plays well with that tree collar you see at the base of the tree. But like I said, I have four of these. I will space them out on the tree. But actually, four is plenty because if you noticed, each pick has three like twirly pieces at the end of them. So by time you kind of bend those out and manipulate those a bit on the tree, nice and full. It's just fun, a bit of whimsy. And again, another texture beyond the ribbons and the ornaments to add to the tree. I do like to break it up when I can with some texture. As always, making sure all of these things that I'm adding are well distributed. Now, oh, these are so fun. These are the ornaments that I bought this year specifically for the home office tree. Let me bring them up close. <laughs> These are so fun. They are five inch plaid. As you can see, they're pink, red, green, blue. So fun. Even has a pink velvet ribbon on them. These are made by Raz Imports, R-A-Z Imports. I got them at Discount Building Materials, which if you watched the video last week, you know that is where my mom and I love to shop in Oxford, Mississippi for Christmas decor, Christmas ornaments. But these are a lot of fun. I think I actually have a link for them as well, like an Amazon link. Oh, I'm shaking my head because I was trying to add them to the tree with the ribbon. Yeah, one moment. I'm grabbing my scissors because the ribbon is not going to work out. Due to the weight of the ornaments, I really need a metal like ornament hook to secure the ornament to the tree. So I'm going to take care of that. But I was saying, I believe I have an Amazon link for these ornaments as well. So if I do, I will add that to the description because this, these are ornaments I actually bought recently. This is a recent purchase. So I like to use these large, like I said, these are five inch, but I like to use the larger ornaments like this to fill any gaps or holes in the tree. I like to take it back into the tree a bit. These are not forward in the tree necessarily. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like the way that looks. But take them back. That way when you're looking at the tree, uh, your eye has a place to go. It's not all just kind of forward on the tree. You can actually look into the tree. And this nice plaid motif to them with those pops of color, perfect for this kind of use. So... I'm going to add all of these to the tree. You will see here in a moment. I'm working with two right now, but I actually have a total of six. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I really like these ornaments. I'll bring out the rest of them here, remove the pink ribbon, add them to the tree. And as always, if I want to add a pink ribbon back in future years, that is very easily done. Let's see, just looking for spaces where I need these ornaments. And once I get all of those into the tree, I'll move on. These are some fun pink ornaments. <laughs> As you can see, I have two different options for pink ornaments. And these are the next size down for me. They're in between four to five inches. But that first ornament I got at Hobby Lobby. This one I also got at Hobby Lobby. But the first one was a recent purchase, I believe this year. A glass ornament, pink, marbled, has a gray ribbon to them. These other ones are velvet, very lightweight fabric ornament. And what I'm doing here is just comparing these to the plaid. Oh, <laughs> I found the one I liked. Comparing the two different pinks to the plaid ornament to see which pink works well with the pink in the plaid ornament. So I've figured it out. It's a glass ornament that has that kind of marble look to it. Now this ornament, I'm bringing it up close. It has a large loop on it there, see that? So sometimes you can use that loop to secure it to the tree. No ornament hook is needed. It just depends. This is a heavier ornament. So I think I am gonna end up adding a hook to it just so I can make sure it's secured to the tree, it's not going to fall off later, break, make a mess. But since this is a larger ornament, again, I will take some of these back into the tree to fill some more gaps within the tree. I do this 
you know, I'm probably going to repeat myself, but I do this to make sure from every vantage point in the room, you see something going on in the tree and there's not some big gap in the tree that I overlooked. I'm going to keep adding these pink ornaments to the tree. And those were newer, so I will see if I have a link to those as well that I could share. Sometimes Hobby Lobby sells out before you can even consider an online purchase, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Now, the next ornament I'm going to add, let me think, what did we do next? Oh, we took a drink of coffee. That's what we did next. Very wise. Very wise. These next ornaments are fun. They're actually plastic, believe it or not. Yes, I'm showing that there. And they have some fun, iridescent glitter inside of them. All inside, so mess-free. I like to add these to the tinsel tree. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But you're going to notice I typically favor glass ornaments. I'm not a big fan of the plastic or shatterproof ornaments. But I could not pass these up. And this is the reason why. The iridescent glitter inside of them. It's fun. It's something different. But the way that, that iridescence captures the light. And I'm talking not just the lights in your Christmas tree. But also what other lights you may have in the room. It's so fun. It almost reminds me of a soap bubble. You know how sometimes they can capture the light and look kind of iridescent. Same kind of effect with these ornaments. So for these, I'm adding them inside the tree, kind of like I was filling holes with the larger ornaments. But these, since they are a little bit smaller and they're plastic, so lightweight, I'm bringing them forward. These next ones, similarly lightweight, but these are glass. They're pink have this fun gold snowflake glitter on the outside. These are great for adding a subtle pop of color to the tinsel tree. I love pink. If I have an excuse to add pink to the tree, I'm going to do it. And especially considering this is my home office where I work full time, work remotely during the week. I think I can afford myself some pink on this tree. I bought these several years ago at Walmart. I honestly have not seen them since or anything close to them since. But I'm sure there are similar styles out there if you're interested. But fun little pop of color. Next, moving on. Speaking of fun, these are what I consider prized possession. They're leopard print. Look at this. Bringing them up close so you can see. This was a happenstance purchase. I found a box of four at a home goods store about three years ago. I have not seen their twin or cousin since. So prized possession, I treat these with care every time I store them each Christmas because I love them. If you watched last week's video, you know that both my mother and I, we both love leopard print. I think this is a great way to incorporate whimsy that love of leopard print into your tree without it being like garish or glaring at you it's very subtle that monochromatic white i'm going to add these on the tree bring them out front because i love to see them yes see love to see them but add these to the tree for some fun just some fun now next up continuing with round ornaments with these as you can see i'll bring them up Hunter green, but I have a matte option and a gloss or shiny option. I like these because they are a hunter green, very deep, but these have a blue base to them, so they're like a blue green. I prefer that over a yellow green. And I bring that up because they marry well with the ribbons that I've already added to the tree. But even thinking about my room here, as you can probably notice, I have some blue in my room. This wall color, the top part of my wall above the board and batten, it is a Sherwin-Williams paint and it's called Beguiling Blue. And it, I, again, thinking about the room, these ornaments have the blue base to them. 
it all marries or partners together very well. So I'm going to add these to the tree, careful not to get them close to the ribbons. Up next, let's do something different. I'm bringing them close. I'll bring them back, don't worry. These are teardrop ornaments. As you can see, the top of the ornament is like this light turquoisey blue. The bottom is gold, has some glitter. But you may have noticed I had several different sizes, but every ornament I've brought to the tree so far has been a round ornament. And I definitely try to break that up with some different shapes and different kind of, well, just looking ornaments, different shapes, different sizes. And this teardrop is perfect. I think sometimes we can stockpile the, the round classic ornaments. And then once we get them all on the tree, we kind of wish for more. And that's where these teardrop ornaments and also just any other different shape of ornaments come to the rescue. I have, I believe, eight of these. I'm going to add as many of them as I can onto the tree. I just throw them all on there because I think they look great. See? Yes, I think they look great. <laughs> Next up. Oh, Ollie is back. He has brought a toy. Oh, my word. What does he have? Will he surrender the toy? No, he will not. <laughs> come on. He will come on his own terms. Just wait. <laughs> He's going to jump up in the chair. Oh, he has his mountain poo. He loves this toy. I'll bring it up close. See? Yes. Mountain poo. Loves this toy. What an arm, April. <laughs> so sweet. Ollie is close by. <laughs> Next ornament, or ornaments, I should say. This is a fun six foot garland made by Martha Stewart. I found it last year at Home Goods. I've kept it in storage. What I like to do with these is actually cut them, take them off the garland. It's like a value pack of ornaments. Nice way to actually just kind of start little ornament collections. If you can find a garland, take it apart. That's what I'm doing here. And these are fun. They're very a lightweight glass, have a little bit of metallic sheen to them, but pink obviously a fun pop of color but with these they're all either in an acorn shape or a pine cone shape so it's not round it's breaking up the shapes similar to what we did with the teardrop so it's going to take me a few minutes i won't <laughs> put you through all of that but i'm going to cut these ornaments away from the garland that way i can use them individually and just anywhere i feel like i need a little exhalation point or a little pop of color on the tree i'm just going to add all of these that I can to the tree. We are nearing the finish line, I think. Here are some fun ornaments. Smaller. I'm trying to bring them close to the camera here so you can see. Yes, set those other ones down. But these, these are round at first glance, but they're not flat round they have some like dimensions of divots in them hopefully you can see this yes white and silver a little bit on the smaller side i'd say they're probably about a about an inch to an inch and a quarter in size diameter i like to add these again is a little exhalation point i think of these as little polka dots on the tree because it doesn't matter what i typically use them with like what color scheme theme the white kind of breaks up everything that's going on in the tree. And they, believe it or not, they do pop away from the tinsel. You would think that they would blend in with the lighter color tree, but they do not. But similar to what I did with the pink ornaments, just popping them wherever I need them. Oh my goodness, finish line, I was right. We're going to add the tea trop, excuse me, the tree topper. Tree topper. It is a metal kind of star that I like to add to the tree. This is not your classic or typical topper. 
In fact, when it's not Christmas, this sits on a bookshelf as a decorative element. But I love to use this star on this tinsel tree. Again, because it ties with the tree collar at the base. But also, it's just unexpected. It's something different. And it's very easy for me to slide that on the top. You'll see here in a moment, I'll bend some of the branches to make sure it's secure. But with this, the tree is complete. I thank you so much for being with me. I'm going to show some close-up shots of all of the ornaments, so the video is not done just yet. And then I will pan once again so you can see the home office. I mentioned it in the beginning, but I'll mention it here as well. Let me know if you want a tour of this room. I might consider that. I think that could be a good video to share with you. But I am so pleased with this tree. I will continue to share our Christmas decor with you and all the happenings here. Ta-da! <laughs> I love it. But until next time, my friends, take care and happy Thanksgiving.